back with Daniel Mulgan with Let's Talk Edition. How are you, Dan? Hey, the Rudy Man. How's it going? How are you? Good to be here with you for another Let's Talk Edition. Glad to have it, hopefully, and uh, it's going to be a great show, I'm sure. Same here, same here. I'm sure it's going to be with you. It always is. And today we are talking about uh, filtering through information. There is lots of information in the information age. Uh, plenty, plenty. There's so many. There's too many, actually. And we don't need all of them. Actually, if we pay attention to all of them, we'll drown. So what do we do? That's the question of today. We That's exactly to right. About it. Yeah, yeah. No. So what do, what do we mean by... So what are the informations that you get daily? I get like a lot from social media, from news, or oh, fuck news, but I, you, you get it, you know. Especially, Fox, from, you know, literally, fuck Fox News, literally, these guys are... <laughs> fuck news. <laughs> yeah. From, like, what, literally, you spend like five hours watching Fox News. Oh, I believe in what they're saying. It's very nice. China, China, let's go. And it's pretty <laughs> weird. These guys, come on, man. Well, that's, that's true. I mean, yeah, so... But yeah, I even yeah, I... heard that even Fox News nowadays is turning against Trump. It's pretty weird. Like, you cannot believe that even Fox News... I know, right? Like, His own favorite channel is gradually, you know, Fox and Friends is still loyal to him, but like even Fox is gradually starting to get away from Trump. Like, they know he's headed towards a very wrong direction. So even a you know source of information as basically biased as Fox News nowadays understands that there's something wrong with Trump. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, you got you got to understand that. I mean, if you don't at, at this point, it's I don't know. Anyway, so we have a lot of information. Uh, in the air yeah, from our communication with our co-workers, friends, social media, TV. Uh, I don't know if you watch uh, if you watch TV shows, listen to podcasts, reading books. Ultimately, there is a portion of them that we want to do because if, if, if we're honest here, half of them are contradictory to one another. So obviously you can't adopt both of like the two contradictory thing. Otherwise, it's not going to make sense. Ultimately, the idea is how do we deal with these uh, these informations and how to sort them through them. So what are the main channels of information? First of all, before we even get to the details, what are the main channels of information that you get your information or you're thrown at information at uh, in your personal life? Very well. First of all, you mentioned uh, a lot of the great sorts of information that nowadays are quite popularly used by the people. But as you know me personally, I'm a huge fan of filtering things out. Now, this might somehow make me, can, uh, some people might, might say, like, Daniel is extremely close-minded. Oh, my gosh, this guy's blocking everything. But the fact of the matter is that we are drowning in information on a daily basis, but we are all starving for wisdom. And because of this, I believe in the importance of looking for good information that will ultimately lead to wisdom at some point and not just take the garbage in. Because if you want to just take whatever comes your way, you're, you, you somehow you know, cannot control the direction of your life. You mentioned things like television or, I don't know, the cinema, TV series. But let's be honest. Almost everything you mentioned on that list, perhaps except for the books, which, which I am a huge fan of, they yeah. all have one purpose, to sell and make money for their producers. And let's be honest. If, I mean, like, have you ever thought about the fact that uh, you've never received a bill, oh, I don't know, to pay for CNN or you've never received a bill for any of these things? Maybe you have some cable TV right now going on, but generally we do not pay for the content and the quality of the content that we receive on television. And the same thing goes with a lot of websites. The same thing goes with social media. Ultimately, the world revolves around consumerism and advertisement. And because of that, um, almost the majority of all the information that we receive on a daily basis, from my opinion, are garbage. They're designed to get you to say, wow, ooh, or whatever, in order for you to be able to somehow spend more time on it. And we earlier mentioned about this. I mean, we ourselves are podcasters, so we have to know about what type of content attracts the attention of the audience. And the same thing applies to almost all media. Because of this, as you probably have already guessed, I am very conservative when it comes to choosing what media to listen to or pay attention to. And almost most of what you mentioned right now do not exist in my life. I do not watch television, except occasionally some news. Uh, I do not like TV series, follow TV series or movies. The only time I watch anything like a movie or TV series is just solely 
to learn a foreign language. And I never do that in English or uh, easy languages. I often do that in like some exotic languages, like, I don't know, let's say Mandarin Chinese or whatever. And uh, because of this, I look at all of these things as nothing more than just language practice, because I do not want my mind to be involved with the content of most of the garbage that is out there. I just heard that uh, the new season of, I don't know, a Game of Thrones is about to come, speaking of garbage. Another one is coming, and I'm pretty sure that Donald Trump oh, can't wait. There, there to are going to be plenty of people who are going to be upset that you call. Of Game course, of I'm pretty sure <laughs> one of those will be Donald Trump because he literally made a couple of posters of uh, basically uh, some people who watch Game of Thrones, and he literally can't wait to see the final episode when the king puts a wall around the city <laughs> to keep the foot back. That, that should be that should be his favorite show, and especially the part with the wall. Of, yeah. of course, there's a part. In that, uh, there's a part in that. TV series about this king who puts a wall. This guy, like, literally, like a kid, like, oh my gosh, they have a wall too. I want to have a wall too. That's very nice. Yeah. So, because of that, unfortunately, we are seeing a lot of people. I mean, just imagine the amount of money spent on a you know TV series like that one, dude. This, I mean, I work in business. I understand what it means to finance a project. I know what it means to take financial risks and invest millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in these movie projects, sometimes even billions, I mean, in large cases. But the point is this, when you put all this money, you want to get what? A return on investment, which is why, unfortunately, nowadays, most of the media and source of information, they are designed for one thing, to make money for those who produce them. And because of this, their concern is so much less on educating people or telling them the truth or even telling them what they need. And instead, it's all about giving them what they want. And that is my first, you know, problem with uh, most of the information that is out there. Because I know, because I have worked in business almost my whole life. I was a salesperson when I was 17 years old. So I understand sales. I understand marketing. I understand what it means to influence others in order to get them to say yes and buy your product or service. And given the fact that I literally see the matrix behind uh, basically commerce and uh, marketing and sales and advertisement, whenever I see these things, I just like, these, are, these guys are good salespeople. They are great salespeople. They know what they're selling. But unfortunately, since I've been a salesperson myself, I know that I, I can see the tricks that are happening here. I can see what content you know, are put again and again in the media and what topics are discussed because ultimately the purpose of the majority of all the things you mentioned, my man, Pujiks, except perhaps for books, because that's a different audience. People who read a lot of books are a very different audience than, yeah. let's say, uh, because not a lot of people, uh, you know, for example, uh, binge read on books and whatever, but they do binge, you know, watch TV series and whatever for days. So because of the fact that the majority of the media, the source that you mentioned, are meant to produce income. And producing income when it comes to information is predominantly about one thing, the number of viewers, number of people that look at it or watch it or listen to it or enjoy it or whatever. Because of that, unfortunately, we are now trapped in a world that unfortunately values profitability of information much more than it values the authenticity and credibility of information. And we're living in a world where falsehood is being spread out pretty easily because that's what's going to make uh, the most profit. That's going to get you, uh, you know, to somehow spend more time watching that. And because of this, all from all the things you mentioned, I generally would like to keep my basically consumption of information to a minimum and instead focus only on uh, quality information, predominantly via audiobooks, books, and seminars, trainings. Because this is, from my perspective the best way to have the right input because your input determines the output. Now, with that being said, I don't live in a bubble. So I do somehow sometimes watch TV series or play video games or whatever, but that's done solely for practicing foreign languages and not merely for entertainment. Well, that's interesting because I, I actually don't, I do want to share a little bit of a personal story for you. Now that you were talking about these things, I, I was thinking about myself and I mean, I don't watch, uh, too much TV series or or movies or anything like that. I I don't listen to news or read news at pretty much at all unless it comes from uh, a source that I already know. For example, a friend or something. Um, and uh, so I don't. For example, watch. I'm so jealous of you. 
if you don't watch the news, I'm so jealous because in, in my line of business, I need to listen to news on a yeah. daily basis because of investment issues, changing prices and currencies. But I'm so jealous of you, man. If I could you literally understand. have one wish, it would be just to never have to watch the, the news or follow the news ever again. But unfortunately, that's currently not possible. But I'm so jealous of you, man. That's great. That's yeah. great. So, so to clarify, I meant like the general news that everybody talks about, which is the news that you're talking about. But um, uh, to clarify specifically, there are certain news, for example, that, that comes from NASA or stuff like that, or from my friends, or so. those I will listen to or read or whatever. But uh, so I'm I'm interested in the uh, space industry, of course, as, as you know. And uh, so those ones I, I definitely listen to, and thankfully those are not necessary, like at least not as aggressively targeted that way. So yeah, I agree with you. That's uh, that's that's such a change in my. I, I mean, I used to do that and. When I stopped listening or reading news to that degree, uh, I may see titles or hear titles here and uh, here and there, but when I don't pay attention to them, I just glance at them and that's forgotten in a minute or two. That's great. It's just such a relief on my side. Wow. Society. It's just like I am not bombarded and my life is not really uh, worse for it because I don't know those things. Um, anyway, so, so that's one thing that I uh, per perhaps am – Good. I do watch movies, especially when I, I mean, I don't watch, I don't watch movies at home that much. I usually like the experience of going to the cinema with friends, which is a social habit mostly. Um, and I do every now and again, uh, like to decompress with watching some TV shows. Obviously they're selected. I, I don't like the idea of going on Netflix or whatever and just seeing what pops up and play it. I just, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, I just need to know what I'm watching at. Uh, and when it comes, obviously, books. But the interesting part is the podcasts. That That is my personal interesting uh, story here. And I started listening to a few podcasts. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and at some point, I realized there is a certain category. Uh, there are some podcasts, not category. There's some podcasts that I currently follow that are are different. And one of the differences here is that they, they actually don't. There, there are a couple of them that I'm going to actually pitch in because I really like them. For people who are, who are interested, but um, there are a couple of them actually do not uh, run ads at all, and they are not behind a paywall. But you're encouraged if you're uh, enjoying them and you can spare a dollar or two monthly or whatever to do so. So it's a patron fund basically. So they're, if you are enjoying the content, you do that. And uh, while well, they have their own reasons, and you can listen to them themselves why they do do this. But one of the things is exactly what you're talking about. Uh, one podcast is Making Sense by Sam Harris, and the other one is uh, Peter Atia. He he champions longevity and quality of life, and tries to figure out that question, the the problem, uh, that problem, solve that problem. Anyway. So these two are amazing, and um, that they are exactly uh, well, give or take. Uh, approaching this uh, this way, and they're like, if I get a uh, advertiser on my podcast who funds me, then one way at some point I know I am bound to change my content opinion exactly to attract towards. more certain types of audiences exactly yeah yeah or, or appeal to my uh, advertiser who's paying for me so I gotta <laughs> so so I can see the problem there at least in the podcast uh, advertisement industry. And it doesn't mean that it necessarily comes up in every single ad in, the, in, a, in every single podcast, but it can, and that's a problem. So, one way, as you mentioned, is to limit yourself. And can you give some um, uh, tips that you do for? I mean, you, you shared them some of them already, but if you have any others, because otherwise, I want to move on to how what are the underlying solutions for the bigger problem. But for now, do you have any other tips for individuals for now? Well, obviously, as you mentioned, limiting the type of you know information that you consume does not mean that you literally close your eyes and then you put your fingers in your ears and say, blah, 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 I'm not hearing, I'm not saying anything. That's not the point because that's not exactly effective either because you must be aware of what's happening. You must know what's going on. So for myself, I believe that you should find information where there is quality, experience, and some sort of trust and reason. I mean, anyone can say anything, let's be honest. And if there are enough people who believe in what that person says, then obviously that idea becomes a lot more valuable just because of the fact that many people believe in it. This is just human nature. And because of that, we cannot somehow understand whether this information is real or not. So for that reason, 
I do not judge uh, basically uh, the quality of the content based upon how many other people ascribe to that belief system or idea or whatever. And instead, I look at it uh, and from a perspective of and uh, basically analyst. I literally try to analyze the personality behaviors as well as the thoughts of the people that I want to listen to. And I look into, you know, for example, especially people who have a lot of experience or many years of experience in a certain field. And more importantly, I look at their life. So before I read any book, the first thing I do is, unless I want to read the book purely for the sake of reading, because I do that sometimes as well, because sometimes I just need, for example, I mean, I don't have a lot of, let's say, French books. So if I get my hand on a French book, then I don't really care if the information is right or not. I just got to consume the material because I need to practice my French. But if I really want to read something for the sake of uh, increasing the quality of basically my uh, life and I want to learn from it. So in that case, the first thing I do, I look at the author and I start doing search about that person's uh, current performance in business life, uh, academia or whatever it is, whatever field he or she is an expert at. And I realize, is this person the kind of person I want to listen to? Does he or she have the kind of results that I personally admire, would like to have for myself? Only then, if the answer is yes, of course, I will be able to read and consume the material. However, if I'm not going to basically like what I'm seeing about this person or hearing, then obviously it doesn't matter how enticing the title of the book is or how attractive the seminar is, I'm just going to ignore it. So the first thing that matters when it comes to knowing which type of information you should listen to is who is saying that. Because who says what is much more important than what is being said. And because of this, I tend to look for what I call mentors. My entire life has been the result of looking for mentors, the very best in the type of things I wanted in life. If I want to, for example, uh, start a career in sales, which I did when I was 17, I said, who's the very best in terms of sales training? And of course, it was Brian Tracy. Then I wanted to get into NLP and psychology and management and influence. And I said, who really knows the stuff the best? And of course, I found a lot of great basically authors, including Tony Robbins, Robert Greene. So because of that, I first, uh, I go way down and sort of say like, so who are the type of people that I like, respect and admire, and that I trust them and I believe in them? I find these people and sources. And then if I ever want to expand my knowledge, I don't just go pick up a random book from a random author, unless it's t you know the title is very interesting. Instead, I say, so, is the new content that I'm about to read in any way relevant to what I already know? And I ask myself, so for example, there's a great, let's say, for example, let's talk about, a, uh, for example, a book about sales, right? So the very first cornerstone of sales, for example, is constant prospecting. And let's say there comes a book that says, you should never prospect the fewer clients to call the better. This goes against what I already know. And for the most part, this might be very nice to entertain the thoughts of whether it's true or not. But generally, I tend to s somehow ask myself, is this young entrepreneur really capable of breaking all the rules and create this uh, idea? So I look deeper inside of, for example, his or her perspective about life. And if that's not the case, of course, I ignore the information. Now, that obviously will make you a bit more resistant to change. And that's not necessarily a good thing, because in the modern world where things are all changing, you want to have an open but generally, I realized that the ideal approach, the best and the most solid approach is to find that middle ground between complete closed mindedness and complete open mindedness. Because if you're completely open minded, let's be honest, you have no control over even for your thoughts or even your life or its direction. And because of that, you don't know what's right or wrong. It's like, should I go left or right? One says left, one says right. I don't know. So this leads to confusion and lack of decisiveness. On the other hand, if you're completely closed-minded, then obviously you might be blinded to some truths that you have basically uh, forgotten or failed to see your whole life. And because of this, you will keep going down the wrong path, not knowing what to do next. And because of this, I'm a huge fan of the middle ground right between extreme open-mindedness and extreme closed-mindedness. And sometimes people ask, like, ask me, Daniel, are you open-minded or closed-minded? I say, I'm both. Because if you're either one of those, you'll have a lot of problems. If you're completely open-minded, and for you, every new idea is very interesting. Number one, you're probably not that busy or successful because let's be honest, if you don't have time, you don't have time to just entertain all the thoughts or ideas. This probably means you're unemployed or underemployed, and that's not very good. And at the same time, if you're completely closed-minded, then dude, the world is always changing. This means that you will be extinct mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially. So the best approach is 
to have an open, basically, mind while simultaneously being cautious of the new information you're being basically given via the material. And of course, the final tip I got for, for individual, on individual level, is to just limit your, uh, basically, contact with social media unless you know the people you're following personally. Social media is now the biggest marketing tool in the world. It, it surpasses almost every other, uh, basically, form of advertising, especially on personal branding level and also some products. And because of this, you should really be careful of how you can literally waste hours and hours of your days on social media. So by limiting these, uh, the use of your social media and focusing on what, the, what type of material you want and also sticking with what you know best with the help of your mentors, that will give you a great idea of what is worth listening to and what is not. Amazing. So ultimately, I think one, beside the exact advice, I think what you, what I'm hearing is that be cautious of striking the balance and not going one way or the other. Exactly. Key here. Yeah. Okay, cool. And um, there's also, obviously, as we talked about, there's an underlying problem on our, I don't know, social structure, political structure, whatever you want to call it. So that is structured to, you know, not as you, you, you alluded to it previously, that care, uh, value, you know, producing information that gets attention over producing the right and valuable kind of information rather than any information for the sake of attention. Have you ever thought about if there is any potential solution to this problem or where does this problem even arise? Well, first of all, let's be honest. This is not something new. I mean, think about human history. Since the time, I mean, I, I'm right now reading a great book uh, from my one of my most favorite authors, which I'm, no, I'm sure you know his name. He's a Jewish historian by the name of Noah Harari. And he, he basically, uh, he's the author of Homo Deus. And now I'm reading his uh, basically other book, uh, The Sapiens. And it's pretty, pretty amazing and exciting. Basically, in that book, the author talks about the creation of language and how the creation of language led to the creation of myths. As we know, the word myth implies things that people believe in but are not true. Mm -hmm. And in that book, the author talks about how myths actually led to the prosperity of humanity, how falsehood lies that we believe in actually made humanity the dominant species on earth, because ultimately myths or lies or misinformation, which is a basic foundation in power, because I've been studying power, as you know, for many years, and the very uh, fabric of power on its all shapes and forms is uh, basically based upon misinformation that is giving uh, people the wrong information to maintain order and to move towards the goals of the society by undermining the goals of the individual. So ultimately, this has been the whole uh, human history. And this is not something new. This doesn't belong to the 21st century or the 20th century or the first century or even the past 70,000 years. This goes way back to the creation of language. So when language was created, then ca there came the myths. The myths were created for one reason, to allow a larger number of people to live to together without killing each other or raping their women or causing a lot of problems. And because of this, the myths ultimately allowed societies to create order in large communities, because let's be honest, for most, for almost 80% of our evolutionary history, we lived in very small tribes, never exceeding the number 150. However, how can you manage large cities with, uh, of course, initially with hundreds and thousands, and eventually uh, hundreds of thousands, and nowadays millions in, in one city and uh, in, in a country. So there came the solution, myths. By creating myths like nationalism, patriotism, that serving your society leads to a greater life. If you do the good thing, if you pay taxes, if you pay the church some money, that you'll go to heaven and in heaven you'll have a great paradise. So pay now and enjoy the paradise later in heaven. So ultimately these myths were created in order to, first of all, give meaning to the lives of the people whose lives have now been compromised and became a tool of serving society instead of serving themselves. For example, it was, it was pretty amazing in that book, it was mentioned that uh, in most of revolutionary history, we worked an average of four to five hours per day and spent the rest of that time 
dancing, moving around, hopping, e- e- eating, enjoying, mating, sometimes in group style, by the way, because we didn't have monogamy at that time. So because of all of these things, nowadays, most of us, we spend most of our time working, that is serving others. And that's a great thing. But let's be honest. How do you give meaning to the life of that uh, Chinese worker who has to wake up every morning at six, goes to the factory, does the exact same routine, boring stuff again and again for nine hours or 10 or 12, goes back home, have some dinner and repeats this whole process. So in order to create, and of course, this is one example. Let's talk about agriculture and many other jobs. So ultimately, when societies were created, complexity went up and larger numbers of people from different backgrounds had to cooperate to make that society functional. And because of the fact that by nature, we could not do this because we were somehow mistrusting of the others, because we were always, for most of our evolutionary history, we were, we were used, used to living in a very small tribes that everybody knew each other from basically birth. Because of that, the creation of myth allowed societies to function through the usage of lies and myths in order for them. So, for example, yes, you are black and you are white. Yes, you are. I don't know, for example, from this part of the land and you're from this part of the land, but you both belong to one nation and it's patriotism that combines and makes you guys the same. You are countrymen. You are like brothers and sisters. You see, by using language, people who do not have any concept of each other and are from different ethnicities and backgrounds, and different locations in the same land now are all of a sudden compared to the brothers. And as we know in NLP, Those words will create an emotion. And because of this, we created all these myths of nation and culture and society and religions in order to give meaning to the lives of who are somehow being used by the society. And secondly, for the sake of allowing people to cooperate with each other by by, through the creation of morality and other things. So ultimately, because of this, we've had it for centuries and millennia even. This is not something new. And because of the fact that power requires people to believe in things that are false, ultimately, we are living in societies where falsehood is everywhere and it's necessary because without it, probably chaos will ensue. And unless you're, you know, somebody who believes in anarchism, you definitely don't want to live in a place where people are just shooting each other and moving around and just raping the women. So you want social order. And social order is the result of using myths and using falsehood and lies to create a sense of community and belonging to the people who live in large cities. And because of that, you're nowadays seeing a lot of these things, why people watch TV so much. Well, TV is designed to create myths, to make people somehow connect to each other. I mean, where do you find notions such as patriotism or country or honor? These are things we've learned from TV, in the society, in our, especially in the schooling system. So these are all designed to get you to believe in certain things that are not true in order to first, you become a functional member of the society who literally serves society, spends a lot of money, makes a lot of money, pays his or her taxes, sends the children to go to war country and then dies eventually and his children will do the same thing. So that's what the society is designed to do. Society is not designed by the individual's interest in mind. It is designed by the society's interest in mind. And because of that, we need things like Fox News and CNN to go at each other to create. Because let's be honest, both channels are biased. I mean, people are like, Dan, you love CNN. Of course not. Both channels are biased. Television as a whole is biased. I mean, the whole news that we hear, for the most part, is biased and is not always even accurate. So, of course, I'm pretty sure right now Donald Trump's like, oh, I said it's all fake news, fake news. But ultimately, he believes in Fox News, which is the fakest of all news, right? So the fact of the matter is that this was a necessity to create complex societies made of millions of people who had no family ties. And because of this, we needed these lies to be heard. Now, personally, I myself, I don't know about you, Pujiks, I don't like to be lied to. And because of this, it is my personal responsibility to look for the truth on an individual level, because on a social level, the society is not designed in a way that people should know the truth because it is not in the society's interest for the people and individuals to know the truth. I repeat, it is not in the society's interests for the individuals to know the truth as it is. It is always good for the individual to know the truth because he or she will then make good decisions that will enhance his or her life on an individual level, which might in some cases, not always, but in some cases might actually undermine social issues. 
But society functions best when the majority of the people live in that society believe in myths that unite them and give their labor and slavery a meaning. And because of this, I personally believe that if you want to have a good life, it is your responsibility to first want to hear the truth, because the truth isn't always that easy to hear or even digest. And secondly, to look for it on an individual level. Information that comes easy to you. The easier it is for you to receive the information. I mean, what's the easiest way? Television, right? That's what I call the worst of the worst. Because there's nothing easier than just going home and just turning on your television, right? Compare that to, let's say, reading a book, especially a thick book by an unknown author that probably didn't have a lot of, you know, book reviews or campaigns for, you know, book tours or whatever. So ultimately, how long, how, how, how much time do you have to dedicate to finding a good author's book versus just turning your television and watch, I don't know, Fox News or something? So because of this, it is your job as an individual to look for the truth and never expect the society to give it to you. Because it's society's interest to make sure you believe in myths. And once that happens, first, everything works well. The society works well. The system works well. The individual is sacrificed. We're somehow going back to the whole uh, topic of the matrix and uh, finding yourself as a Neo in the matrix. And matrix. So you are either the Neo or you are outside of that world and you believe in the reality or whatever it is. So we call this, by the way, in our community, red pill solutions, right? So you want to take the red pill or the blue, blue, blue pill. I'm not sure if you've watched Matrix, the, the first movie. Yeah, 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 I did. Well, there's a part where Morpheus says, take the truth. Like, you have the two choices. Either you take the blue pill and you go back and you believe what you believe in, which is the falsehood and the myths that we just talked about, or you take the red pill and go down the rabbit hole and see how long it goes. Ultimately, as an individual, you have two choices. You can either take in all the information, let it attack your mind, wait, I mean, whatever, just, just like a blooper, right? It's much easier. You just, all right, whatever, that's what they said on TV is true. What they said on social media is true. Or you can become a, you know, a Neo and take the red pill and look for the truth yourself. But please do know that freedom is not free. The freedom that is created by you looking for information that is true will cost you a lot. Not just in terms of your time, money, and energy, it'll cost you emotionally. Maybe you will lose a friend or two. Maybe you will change your entire career. Perhaps you have to work a lot harder, and maybe things will be a little bit stressed at first. But ultimately, that is the cost that you have to pay to look for the truth. And to make it basically all uh, basically short, because I'm talking a little bit too long here, ultimately, you want to focus on knowing whether you are on the side of individual, basically, uh, developments, or are you on the side of simply believing whatever you want to uh, believe and just letting the society control you? Ultimately, it comes down to one thing. Are you the leader of your mind, or do you le let the society lead your mind? That's ultimately your choice. Yeah, well, I give you this. Um, the, the gem or the gold that you're trying to find, it's probably on the deepest levels of the mind, and it's very rare and hard to reach. Exactly. So. Yeah, it's a, a yeah. There's a saying that says nothing worth having comes easy, and I mean, there's, there's truth to that. So that was interesting. I um, like this. There, there, there's so much, so much to you know contemplate, and I'm sure, as you mentioned, some of it is very um, hard to hear. And uh, there is so much, and of course, we don't have a lot of time because our show is pretty short. But for those of our listeners who want to know more about these things, I highly recommend you guys' book, uh, *Sapiens* uh, by uh, Nova Harari. Pretty amazing book, and you can try it. It's, of course, it's a large book; it's six hundred pages, but definitely worth a try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So um, this was a good talk today. Um, do you have any final co comments or thoughts? Well, actually, before I go for the final comment, I'm going to ask you about you yourself, Pujix, and what yeah. are your plans? I mean, like, how do you plan? I mean, based on what we just talked about right now, you heard me talk basically about these issues. Yeah. What do you want to do to somehow make sure the information you get is more re uh, reliable? I mean, what is your own personal plan? Yeah, well, um, some of it is in action, and that's just like limiting some of the outlets that there are, like news in general. Uh, but I mean, I, I want to refer to. Uh, I mean, the people are good way to limit or narrow uh, in in specific fields. So, for example, uh, with in terms of longevity, as I mentioned, uh, the podcast uh, Peter Atia. If there is anything related to that, uh, and uh, Peter Atia is talking about. 
I know he knows his stuff and I know he's such a picky, critical thinker that doesn't take anything for granted. He just pick, peels all the layers off it to make sure that information has uh, validity enough. So, so yeah, I mean, one of the things that you just mentioned, basically picking mentors or uh, experts, uh, because you can't be expert in everything, as you mentioned. So, you, I, and at some point, you got to rely on people. Exactly. It's a question of finding those people. Yeah. And, uh, but ultimately, I am a, a, a aggressive skeptic. I like to doubt everything, even this person that I put my trust in. Every now and again, I think it's healthy to doubt them um, because Precisely. people change. They might go haywire you never know exactly and, and also i remember one of my professors one time said D don't uh, use author uh, pe uh sorry uh, individuals authority of an individual for authority of an information or knowledge it's not exactly. necessarily true and and one other thing sorry uh one of the things that um uh, he meant by that if if somebody who's famous published something it doesn't mean they're absolutely always 100 percent right exactly. they can't make a mistake yeah precisely so, so it's, that's it's the always, biggest error. That's the biggest, yeah. uh, you know, flaw in our way of thinking as humans, because we are wired again. Unfortunately, this goes back to our evolution. We're evolutionarily wired to think that if an idea is ascribed by a lot of people, if people believe in it, then it must be true. That's yeah. one of the brain bugs. We call it brain bugs. And there's, of course, there's a great book about this uh, title. It's actually called The Brain Bugs. And in that book, it talks right. about some of the we weird ways our brain processes information and thinks about this. So actually, uh, as a second book suggestion, I want to brain bugs and it's a great book about this subject and how our brain makes errors and one of those errors one of those brain bugs if you will and for those of us who don't know what bugs are bugs we don't just talk about like ants or basically or insects here bugs as we as you might not uh, perhaps as, as you know is about the flaws in the system it's a computer terminology obviously so brain bugs means brain errors and the errors that our brain makes and one of those brain bugs actually is this is that if somebody uh, thinks that a lot of people believe in something, he's a lot more likely to believe in that versus uh, just uh, question it or doubt it. And because of this, we have to be very, very cautious, especially of the things that are very popular. One of my friends said, whenever I see a lot of people going towards one direction, I immediately go the opposite direction. And ultimately, let's be honest, the majority can never be true about right about anything. 5% of the population uh, basically holds 95% of the capital, at least in the U.S., right? And the same thing applies everywhere. Most people do not make it in anything. And if you don't want to be the most people, then do not do what most do. That's just the way it is. This is the very cornerstone and the very foundation of personal development. You should not do what most people do if you want to get good results in anything. In anything, this, I'm just talking about business here, man. In anything, if you want to be the best artists, I don't know, the best, uh, let's say, actors and actresses, if you want to be the best, I don't know, athletes, don't do what the majority of athletes do. If you want to be the best uh, fitness, I don't know, bodybuilder, don't do what the majority do, which is what? Injecting some of these uh, hormones and whatever. If you want to be the best whatever, do not do what the majority do because the majority never get any results. In any field, the majority suck. And some people on top make it. And if you want to get results in anything from business and entrepreneurship to education and academia to music, arts and other things to sports, whatever, just do not do what the majority do because the majority fail in whatever they do. And you want to go the opposite direction. And one of the greatest things that majority of people do actually these days is watching television. So right now you might actually start doubting the whole TV thing, right? So just don't do what the majority do. And whenever you see a lot of people I'm very cautious of seeing a lot of people believe in some concepts. Even nowadays, especially with the help of, you know, social media, you see a lot of false ideas that are being repeated again and again and again and again that are not true. For example, you see a lot of photos of entrepreneurs driving Lambos and private jets. Dude, look at real entrepreneurs, man. Real entrepreneurs do not spend, don't think of Elon Musk. He put all of his income pal, into his companies and he was getting money for rent, borrowing money for rent, dude. Entrepreneurs do not yeah. spend their money on basically Lambos when they're in their 20s, 30s, or even 40s. The average entrepreneur who drives fancy cars, real self-made and real, you know how, how old he is? 56 years old, not 20, not 30. So you see like a lot of people believe in these bullshits. Like I got, I'm gonna make millions of dollars with my laptop. That's bullshit, but a lot of people believe in that 
and this, this somehow becomes popular. So please be aware of the information that is popular because here's my cheat sheet for you. The more people believe in something, the higher the likelihood that that information is not true. Pujiks, do you know the best-selling book in the history of humanity? No, what's that? It's the Bible. Right. That should well. tell you how truthful information is when it is very, very, very popular. The same thing goes with best-selling anything. The best-selling TV shows. What are the top shows? One of them, I'm pretty sure, is Game of Thrones. And guys, yeah, it has to be. Yeah. You I'm better be you. careful because we're gonna have the walls like the Game of Thrones. Have you seen my poster, "Walking Cool" with Game of Thrones title? <laughs> That's me. So, guys, yeah. be very careful, especially with the type of information that is very, very popular. Because usually, again, not always. I'm not saying that that's, I mean, science says water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. That's science. Many people believe in it. But I'm talking about beliefs, opinions, philosophies, and emotional things, not facts. Facts are facts. It's proven by science. But a lot of the things cannot be used, uh, you cannot be used oh, by somehow the ideas found in science. I mean, the purpose of life, why we're here, why should we pay taxes? Is it okay to work all the time or is it okay to take it easy? These are not questions that science can answer you. So outside of science and facts that are proven using the scientific method, please, please be aware of the things that are very popular. Because for things that are not scientific and provable by science, unfortunately, oftentimes, the more popular those things are, the less accurate and truthful they become. So please, gotta, yeah, don't do this. That's right. Go ahead. I, I gotta uh, tell you this is a sort of funny story here, and that is so. Recently, I've been trying to mess with people a little bit beside, before. You know, it, this is I'm I'm just a little bit crazy like that. I like to experiment with people every now and again. So. Um, sometimes, sometimes people hold this thought so dearly, whether that's true or not, I, I don't care. I just want to see what it is taking that thought or that belief or whatever. And I, I keep asking them questions. Okay, well, how do you know this is true? Or how do you know uh, that works? And then uh, they reduce it to uh, simpler facts. Of course, that's that's good. And then at some point, they're like, they come to a certain uh, quote unquote fact. And they're like, okay, how do you know that's true? And they're like, well, everybody knows that. Exactly. Of course, it's true. Exactly. Like, but that's Everybody not knows. An that. argue, that's a or some argument. Like, you know, here's what's worse than that. I hear. I, I sometimes hear that. I just feel it. Right. I just feel it. That's like their, you know, fucking argument. This I'm telling you. Yeah. No. Well, the, the, we are not really tuned to feel a lot of things correctly. So um, that's that's the problem. again and, to find it about that reads brain bugs. You know that yeah. most of your intuitions and feelings are actually are not true. And more importantly, another great book about this matter is uh, Robert Greene's latest book, uh, basically. And he talks a lot about the laws of human nature and how a lot of the things that we think we know about ourselves are all true. Yeah, that, no, that's true. And uh, a, a quote from Neil deGrasse Tyson, the worst uh, measuring device is human senses. So you don't want to use that for science. <laughs> Absolutely. This is to all this is like, I did it because I feel like it. Your feelings in most cases are very, very inaccurate because our emotional system is very much out of date. It belongs to millions of years ago. It belongs to our sapien years. It belongs to our uh, lives in the tribes for 80 percent of our evolution. Our emotional circuitry is not at all in tune with reality or the modern world. So please try not to rely so much on how you feel about it. And instead, study, do research, and find the right information. All right, yeah, good talk. This this actually turned into a deeper talk than I expected, and that's awesome. Um, awesome. Any, any, any other final comments? Well, ultimately, as we talked about here today, it's best to focus your attention on looking for the truth. And please do not wait for the society, mass media, social media, or any type of thing that is commonly used to spread information to help you find the truth. It is squarely within your realm of control. It is entirely your job and responsibility to find the truth and be prepared for a lot of hard work and hustle because finding the truth is not as easy as you think. It takes a lot of effort. Currently, 
you have to understand that if you want to control the destination of your life and the plans of your life, better find the right information. Because not having access to the right information means you will inevitably function the role given to you by the society. This means you will end up achieving the goals that a society has set for you instead of achieving the goals that you would yourself want to achieve. And trust me, this is the very definition of modern slavery. In the modern world, in the modern world, you are not, we are not using force to enslave people. Instead, we are using consumerism, mass media, and other myths to create modern slavery of people going to jobs they hate to make money to buy products they do not need to impress the people they do not like. And then after 50, 60, 70 years of consumerism, spending money on the things they didn't care about, doing things they didn't like, they reach the age of 70 or 80 and you ask them, so how is it? And they're all full of regrets. If you don't want to be that guy, the age of 70, 80, 90, or 100, with all the regrets about the things you did, please start looking for the truth and information because then that will allow you to achieve the goals that you want and not the goals that are set for you by default in the society. Well, Ben, this was great. Uh, thanks for being joining me again for this talk. It's my pleasure, buddy. And uh, if you enjoyed the show, please do leave us a comment or a rating and let us know how you feel. And if you don't, that's fine too. You can leave your comments, um, but please be constructive so we can help make this show better for everybody and you, yourself included um, until a later show. Good